Welcome to Intro to Music Theory video number one. Today's video will focus on the four clefs that we use uh, when we notate music and a system that also designates which specific octave or register a note occurs in. So let's jump right in and look at the four clefs that we use when we notate music. So I'll start from the highest clef. The highest clef is the treble clef. The treble clef is used by the violin, by the guitar, soprano singers use the treble clef, and it designates notes that are relatively above middle C. If we look at the spaces on the staff, they spell out F, A, C, E from the lowest space to the highest, and you can count backwards and forwards uh, as to the other pitches on the treble clef. I would also really memorize where middle C is on that line right below the treble clef, because that's going to come in handy. The next clef we'll talk about is the alto clef. The alto clef is used by instruments like the viola. So when we take a look at the alto clef, the thing to note is the line in between those two arched sideway arches is middle C. So we can count up and back from that middle C and figure out all the notes that are on the lines and spaces of alto clef. That is also true for the next clef we'll talk about, which is the tenor clef. The tenor clef is used by the bassoon, by the trombone, and again, those two sideway arches, the line in between them is middle C. So again, we can count forward and backward from that middle C and figure out all the lines and spaces of the tenor clef. The last clef is the bass clef. The bass clef is used by an upright bass, by bass singers, so they're reading off of the bass clef. And as we'll find out in a moment, it is the left hand of the piano. The bass, well, just like the treble and the alto and tenor, are lines and spaces. There are two tricks to memorize where all those notes are. You can memorize the spaces of the bass clef, which are the notes A, C, E, and G from low to high. You can also memorize the note on the line by those two little dots that are in the key signature. That would be the note F. So you can either memorize the spaces A, C, E, G, or that F is in between those two little dots on that line. I would also know that middle C is on the line above the staff. The grand staff, which is used by piano, is a combination of the treble clef and the bass clef. So everything that we've talked about applies. I would always base everything off of middle C because you can count down from middle C into the bass clef or up from middle C into the treble clef until you're comfortable with where all the lines and spaces are and what notes are on those lines and spaces. The last thing we want to talk about is register. Register is going to tell us specifically which C are we playing and which range are those notes going to be in. The easiest one to memorize is that middle C is C4. Every note above that C is going to be in the range of 4. So the D above middle C is D4, the E above that is E4, and this will continue all the way till we get to the next octave, the C on the treble clef. That is C5. All the notes in the next range up to the next C are in the register of 5. The D above that C is D5, the E the top of the treble clef is E5, and so on and so forth. And when we reach the C that is above the treble clef, that would be C6. The same thing works as we descend. So we have middle C, which is C4. The B right below that is B3. All the notes below that until we reach the next C are in the range of 3. So the line below that is A3. G at the top of the bass clef is G3. F in between those two little dots is F3, and so on and so forth. When we reach the next octave C, that's C2, the same thing applies. As we descend, all those notes are in the, the 2 register until we would reach the C way below the bass staff. I hope this helps. 
I would practice this. There are a number of online tools, including musictheory.net, that offer the opportunity to quiz yourself on register and where these notes are. This is a great skill and will allow us to apply these notes to the piano and other instruments and help us as we head down our journey of understanding music theory.